Let's talk about how to grow on TikTok in 2021. Oh shit, actually, eh. So when it comes to TikTok, the algorithm can be just like 2020, the whole year, which is unpredictable as fuck. So because of this, I took the time in the past few months to really understand and research the algorithm. I went on business development, AKA spying on some of the creators I work with to help them grow their business and get brand deals. One of them being King Science with 10 million followers, another one being Jordan and Sage with a million. So basically I've tried to understand not only my account on how to grow my TikTok, but also some other creators I work with. Because of this, I came up with a list of things we should know to grow our account and honestly, Honestly, if these don't work, there's a chance it might not work because it got so unpredictable. Anyways, the point of this video is just to increase our chances in growing. So if you want to know more, just keep on watching. If you are wondering why I'm in my car right now, I'm actually picking up my surfboard from the surf shop. If you guys don't know, why would you know? I broke my surfboard last month and I literally cried. My surfboard is my child. I literally love it to death and I broke it because I'm a fucking idiot. But yesterday, the surfboard dude was like, your board's fixed and repaired from the shop. You can pick it up. So if you guys want to see my surfboard at the very end, she's a beauty. Hopefully you guys can stay to the end to see her. So the first way to grow on TikTok is to make long content that makes people stay. Now I have some examples of this. I think the key is to do like crafty little shit that people can't click off. For example, one of the TikToks I posted yesterday recently had 250,000 views, which is really good for my account because I only have 100,000 followers. Anyways, instead of like creating a normal video of just me talking to the camera, I created a conversation out of myself to explain my idea. And I feel like the reason why this got so many views is because when you have a conversation with yourself or a conversation in general, it's one of those formats where you want to see what that other person said. Psychologically, you want to know how the conversation went, right? So here is the example. How sponsorships work. Let's go. Hi, I'm Tesla. I would like to sponsor your video. Cool, the cost will be $500. Hmm, that's a little too high. Sorry, we can circle back next quarter if maybe this is out of your budget, but that's my rate for now. So as you can see, because of that, the average watch time is 39 seconds, which is a really, really good watch time on TikTok. Hence, everyone's scrolling so fast. Like 39 seconds is a long time. So if you haven't tried creating a longer video using conversations, try it out. Another variation of this is using like text message bubbles. I've seen people literally like text themselves back and forth to like convey an idea. Here's an example of what I'm talking about. Texting Courtney, I'm gonna ask her to dinner. How should I text it? Let's get dinner. Or do you want to get dinner? Go with let's get dinner. So you're like assertive and confident for sure. I think it's so funny, like someone was doing voice impressions and instead of just like almost just talking to camera and doing the voice impression, they like scrolled down on their text message and played an audio of the voice impression. And it just makes sense because psychologically, again, like you just want to see this text message thread. And I think the reason why it works is because it's this back and forth like mentality where, you know, if you're talking to someone, you want to know what they say. And the number one thing that stops my heart from moving is when someone types a message and you see the bubbles, you just like want to know what they're saying. I think that's why it works. So that's a strategy you guys can do interchangeably. All right. the second one this one i call it the what the fuck it's kind of like you gotta these these types of tiktoks go viral for no reason other than what the fuck i've made a tiktok where i was just screaming at the camera literally just screaming what the fuck be shit <laughs> and it got like a couple hundred thousand views and it's stupid. It's literally stupid, but you guys know what I'm talking about Like you will see on your for you page random stuff that goes viral And I think it has this wow factor that is unexplainable and I just don't know why anyone would watch it But it gets views and I don't know how to mimic it because you can't just scream randomly But definitely when you're out about in your life and you see something that's like what the fuck Whether it's a chicken that looks like an ostrich running across the road Like take a video of it and upload it because you'd be surprised how TikTok would respond to it. It's it's quite crazy Oh my god, people are watching me vlog. Mirror skirt, mirror skirt. <laughs> See, like that. If I literally put that moment of me driving and I'm making weird noises on TikTok, I swear to fucking God, it would do well. Like, I feel like the point of TikTok is either you're making super educational, high production videos that are so good, or it's just like, what the f actual fuck? Skirt, skirt, skirt. All right, so the third way to grow on TikTok that I find works so fucking well is basically making a TikTok with a trendy audio, but add some spice. The reason why this is so important is because I see a lot of creators just posting the audio and there's nothing new with it. And especially if there's a hundred million people making the same TikTok with the same audio, you gotta stand out. So let's talk about examples of how to add some spice. King Science is the number one animator on TikTok. And I was working with him this year, just working on some brand deals and management and stuff. And I was asking him like, how the fuck do you get 30 million views on a video? Now, before I explain the answer, my friend here is gonna give me something real quick. <laughs> Hello, do you have the drugs? I mean, the goods? I have. 
How much do you okay. want for, for the pound? <laughs> oh my gosh! That's so cool! I really like it. Oh, you wanna say hi to my vlog? Hello. <laughs> I'm making a video. Check out your shop. What's your shop on Etsy? Becca Jean Studio. <laughs> Heck yeah, I got some gifts for my friends from an Etsy shop. Thank you. All right, sorry about that little intermission. I've just been trying to support more small businesses, go to local coffee shops. As you can see here, I got one this morning. And yeah, I hope this video can encourage you or remind you to spend money on your friends' businesses, local businesses, and not always like go to Amazon for stuff just because it's been a really hard year for a lot of businesses. One in three companies went bankrupt this year and a majority of them are like local shops. So just hoping you guys can support as much as possible but like I mentioned for King Science specifically when he was mentioning to me on how he grew his account to 10 million followers one of his most infamous strategies is basically taking the audio and adding his version of it with his character the reason why he does this is because King Science makes full color animation a lot of the times when there's a trendy audio like this song right when he does his animation version it's like the highest production that anyone has seen on the for you page right you might be scrolling and you're used to someone lip-syncing this song but when when King Science comes with a full color animation, it's like, wow, that's captivating and people share it. So his strategy is always to actually wait for trends to come and then make the animation for it, which is a little bit different because a lot of people try to just hop on the trend immediately, which is fine. But I find it works more effectively if you wait like a few days and then make the best version or the most interesting version of that trend. So if you're an artist, you can make the full color animation. If you're a comedian, you can make this audio more funny by adding your twist. And I think this is like gonna be the new method for growing on TikTok and it's way more effective just because you don't always want to chase a trend and dance to a song immediately when it comes out So by waiting some time and thinking about how you can make it more interesting and evolve the trend It will get more awareness and views because people want to see more interesting things. Hope that makes sense This is gonna go into my fourth tip, which is stitching audio So stitching audio essentially is when you take a video that existing on TikTok and you stitch it So you basically take that clip add it to the front of your video and then you react to it typically now I've done a lot of stitches before this is an example of one we did at the green room. <laughs> it's a little bit savage I can't talk right now. I'm doing hot girl shit. Fuck being good that I'm a bad. Hey, Abby, it's your boss here. I'd really appreciate it if you stop playing the snake game. You're two hours late to our green room meeting. We're having a new series we're launching, and we really need you a part of that meeting. I basically reacted one of the people that work at my company, Abby, of her goofing off, and I told her that, you know, hey, I'm stitching this video to remind you to come to our meeting. And this, by the way, was a joke, so just so you know, like, I don't ever put my team members on blast like that. But for TikTok, I will. And this got 10,000 views on a new account, which is really really, really, really good. Just like being very honest, it's very hard to get views on TikTok now. Like two years ago, it was way easier. So that's why I like making these videos to update you guys just because shit changes. So stitching is a new feature and I find this works so well because what you can do is take a very popular video, stitch it, then add your reaction. And what happens is because you're stitching your video next to a popular video, that video has a higher increased chance to get on more For You pages. And a For You page, if you guys don't know, is the way that TikTok promotes you. It's the only way that your video gets promoted on people's phones and feeds. So your goal as a creator is to get on the For You page because it gets new eyeballs, right? So because of this, I really believe stitching works effectively if you can react to it in a funny or educating way. There's a lot of ways to do stitching. I've also seen people do this trend. Okay, what's something that's not a cult but seems like a cult? Life coaches. So you can also be the start of the stitching. So for example, say you don't want to react to someone's video, but you want to start the stitch. You can ask people to stitch your video in response to it. So I've seen it go both ways and they're very effective if you want to make some laughs and react to something or don't. Don't roast people. It could lead to bullying. Actually, I have a whole video on cancel culture and why we need to be more careful on internet responses and criticism. So if you guys want to see a whole video about how to be better on the internet, check the link in the description box because I think cancel culture is a real thing and can be very dangerous if you're consistently like roasting people which can be very easy on TikTok like roasting people is a real okay actually that goes into my fifth tip you can roast people like roasting people in starting drama on TikTok is super effective I'm really surprised no one talks about it on YouTube in terms of like how to grow just because if you start drama like bro people be heated people will be really interested in that situation and your goal on TikTok right is to get on more furry pages and the only way to do that is if you have a long watch time if people are you know invested re-watching looping right so because of that sometimes you have to start some heat i personally don't like this method because i just i i'm too much of a people pleaser i want friends 
But my friend Gianna or Vagiana on TikTok makes diss tracks roasting big TikTok creators and typically she's friends with them so it's not like gonna be that rude. But it is really interesting because she generates millions of views every video and they're very consistent. And I think the reason why is because although you might not know Gianna but she's roasting someone you do know, you're kind of like invested into, you know, is this really true? Is the beat good? Like, you know, making a song or a diss track is really good because music is very loopable, it's catchy. And I think when you roast someone, you make a song about it and you are funny that's what gets people really invested so if you'd like you can start to go into that territory but just so you know it could be very negative in the internet culture but to each their own. The next one I have is live. Going live on TikTok might not be as effective if you don't have an initial following. I think going live on TikTok works really well once you make some videos, you have some followers, and you want to take it to the next level. A good example of this is Jordan and Sage. They are bus life creators that I work with at my company to help them grow strong businesses. But we've been meeting for the past few months and I recently encouraged them to go live just to experiment with it because I had no fucking idea if live worked. But they told me they want live for 30 minutes for seven days straight. And every time they went on live they got an initial boost of more followers like I believe they told me that they got 5,000 extra followers every time they went on live and I think the reason why is because when you go on live you know TikTok's goal is to get users to stay on it right so say you have some people staying on your live for 30 minutes right TikTok sees that and boosts some of your older videos up and will help attract more followers and I feel like this is something I still need to test more but Jordan Sage did it I tried it it did work I got like another 100 followers every time I went on live after the live ended so let me know if you try this just because I think live is fairly new but it helps so much in terms of like boosting your account after you make a couple videos the last tip I have is getting verified people to comment now this is this can be very cringy okay I'm not talking about like commenting on Charlie D'Amelio and being like comment back in my photo like I think we got to be creative with it you know I do find that if verified creators comment on your post it does boost that video to more for you pages so essentially get people with clout to comment, right? But I think there needs to be a smart way to go about it. The smartest way I've seen people get verified creators to comment on their account is through this challenge. It's basically someone saying, this would be the perfect TikTok and like lists off things that they want this TikTok to have. And by peer pressure, you know, the audience is like, oh yeah, we gotta get Miley Cyrus to comment. They're tagging Miley Cyrus, they're tagging. There's like some peer pressure involved. So a few hours later, Miley Cyrus did comment and now this post got boosted because a verified creator commented and everyone is excited to see this account grow. You're basically kind of gathering people to do something greater. Whenever there's a movement, people feel like they can come together and get something, a result together. Does that make sense? Like, I feel like a lot of creators want results and sometimes they feel powerless. So they come together as a group and peer pressure Miley Cyrus to comment and they get the response. They're excited to do so and they'll keep doing it. And I think peer pressure is one of the things that relatively is newer because it's very hard to execute without being, you know, overdone. Like now I see so many people doing this and it doesn't work so we almost have to be creative with it and I think this is where TikTok becomes extremely powerful like of course we can get Miley Cyrus to comment but imagine we can gather people to be peer pressure to do something great like a movement or save certain causes or donate money to certain things that are important or bring awareness to problems that are real and I sound literally fucking crazy right now but you know I've recently like I said been trying my best to use my social media platforms for better I feel like this year has been a shit show and literally I feel so weird talking talking about how to grow on TikTok when there's so many other problems in the world, like human rights, people, you know, having financial issues, losing their job. Like I sometimes feel so bad because what's the point of dancing on TikTok, getting followers, if, you know, there's so many people that need our help. And I really hope you guys can grow on TikTok to get your followers and get your coins, sis, because I feel like everybody should express their creativity and get the bag. But I also think like we should use our platforms for good and almost use these tips and tricks to eventually do something great. And I'm still figuring that out for myself. Recently on my TikTok account, I've been using these strategies to promote growth for small businesses and to encourage people to you know spend money in local shops like I'm doing this video but who knows next year if there's a certain issue that I'm passionate about like climate change or a certain cause like I'm gonna stand up for it so I really hope you guys can use these tips for good and just I don't know find something that you care about and don't always feel pressured to just follow the trend like feel free to speak up and talk about shit that you want because that's at the end of the day what a social media platform should be used for which is helping people and obviously entertaining and making people smile but I think TikTok's so powerful that we can do a lot more than that as well. Anyways, you guys are probably bored of me talking, but if you enjoyed this video, like this video and let me know if you have any questions. I will answer some questions at the very end of this video in terms of your guys' account. I'm gonna actually go on TikTok Live to see if any of you guys have questions. But first, <laughs> I wanna pick up my fucking surfboard. You guys, I haven't seen it in so long, so I hope she's, I hope she's okay. So let's go drive.
to see my new surfboard fixed. I'm so excited. Wow. Wow, look at that. She's so pretty. Guys, we got the surfboard. Thank you so much, Gordy, for fixing my board. Gordy is a local surf shop in Central California, so if you ever need your surfboard fix, go to Gordy. Yeah, this board had literally like 7 million dings on the side of it because I dropped it on the cement because I'm an idiot. The wind flew and I dropped it and it shattered the board, but it looks brand new. So thank you so much, Gordy. Look at me, I'm, I'm literally color coordinating with my board. It's been a good day. I'm gonna answer some of your guys' questions about TikTok. I will do it on rapid fire just in case any of the tips today were confusing. I'm gonna let you guys take the show and ask me anything. All right, let's go. I'm gonna take three questions. All right, the first question is from Octonation. Thank you, Octonation. All right, so you asked, should you pick a niche prior to getting on the platform or just throw spaghetti to the wall? Just throw spaghetti to the wall. Like literally just throw spaghetti to the wall. I like made 20 TikToks in the span of two days and like it was all over the place. I made some rants. I made some brand deal videos and my last video got like a quarter million views and it was me like doing this random skit about influencer marketing and now I kind of know what to do now. So like I literally believe in throwing so much at the wall unless you're someone that's like really fucking talented. Like if you're a musician or you're like an animator and you know your shit then like stick to it. But if you have no like you would know like the fact that you're asking this question means typically it's not that you don't have talent but like you don't know what you want to do yet. So just throw shit at the wall. Hope that was helpful. All right. What's the formula from the FYP? So so the FYP stands for For You page. I would say, you know, the formula does not ever exist. It always changes. But I would say the formula is a combination of three things. It's like watch time, how long your video is, how many comments, like engagement, like shares and comments, and loopability, how many times people rewatch it. Those I think are the three main, main ones. But again, like there's so many and I, every day I'm learning. So if you guys have any ideas, let me know. The last question is... What is the best time to post and how many videos a day? I don't think there's any fucking time. I really don't. I really don't. There's even like a report from TikTok business accounts that say like there's no fucking time. I post like 10 times yesterday from 10 a.m. to like 10 p.m. And all of them did not perform the same. Some of them popped off and some of them didn't. I think there's really not a consistency with TikTok but just because people are checking their phones. I believe TikTok's watched uh, screen time is like 59 minutes a day and people check TikTok like almost 10 times a day. So like it really doesn't matter because of that. Like that's personally for me though. So just keep that in mind. All right, so I just took three questions from you guys. If you have any more, feel free to comment on them below. I will get to them. And yeah, I hope this video was helpful. I love you guys. Shout out to the comment winner. Shout out to the comment winner. Comment on this post to be featured in the next episode. If you guys want to be the next comment winner, comment below. Best wishes in your TikTok journey, and I'll see you guys later. Bye.